Today we begin with disgust over establishment politicians and division among the political parties. We're not talking about the U.S., but Europe, which is suffering major political chaos as the British exit from the European Union, or Brexit, looms large. What's it all about? We explain the upheaval and the role the U.S. could play in the success of a newly independent Great Britain. The U.K. has voted to leave the European Union. It is the biggest shock in the history of modern British politics. Nobody predicted the British would vote to exit the European Union. The words you heard over and over again, stunning, shocking. Well, almost nobody. I knew that outside of London media circles, an awful lot of people were going to vote for Brexit and it would be a majority. Liam Halligan is a columnist for The Telegraph newspaper and author of the book Clean Brexit. I met him at a journalism conference shortly before the Brexit vote in 2016. How did you know what almost nobody predicted? Well, I told you those years ago, Cheryl, that the UK would vote for Brexit, which at the time wasn't obvious because uh, I live outside the M25, the UK's version of the Beltway, if you like. What's amazed me and actually quite shocked me is the extent to which the political and the media and the business establishment in this country has tried to thwart Brexit. Millions of voters in the United Kingdom lashed out with a vote in support of Brexit after Europe's uncontrolled immigration surge a year before. And they got quite scared, not because they're intolerant of immigration, because this is an extremely tolerant country when it comes to immigration, but because it was pressing down on their wages. We hadn't made the right plans in terms of housing, the health service, schools. So the UK wants immigration, but it wants it to be planned and it wants a system of controlled immigration like you have in the States, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. But breaking up is hard to do. More than three years after the divorce, the exit is stalled amid efforts to unwind it by leaders who never supported it. And many Europeans want to hang on. This could really be a loss for, for Europe and for our common uh, virtues and our common goals. But I do not think it would be... The right chaos has taken out two prime ministers oh, no. and cleared the way for the Conservative Party's Boris Johnson to become Britain's new prime minister. Statement, the prime minister. He campaigned on a promise to deliver Brexit. For the purpose of uniting and re-energising our great United Kingdom and making this country the greatest place on earth. Meantime, the turmoil has also shattered the country's two major political parties, which are split within themselves over should we stay or should we go. We've had the most unprecedented revolt against the entire political class, I think, in, in our history. Political analyst David Cowling is a scholar at King's College, London University. He describes a dynamic that may sound familiar to Americans. In the immediate aftermath of our 2016 referendum, 17.4 million people voted to leave. And almost immediately, people on the other side, people who'd never spoken to any of these people, didn't know their names, didn't know what they looked like, knew absolutely nothing about them, felt totally qualified to call them racists, homophobes, misogynists, right-wingers, and the rest of it. Um, and if you do that to people, what do you expect? When did you ever change your mind in favour of somebody who insulted you? It doesn't work in life, it doesn't work in politics. In the big picture, Cowling says voters left and right are disgusted with the establishment and fleeing the two main parties, Conservative and Labour. As a person who's watched opinion in politics, what is your overview opinion of what's happening now? Well, I've never seen anything like it. The politics of my lifetime has been dominated by two great monoliths, the Conservative Party, the Labour Party. They are currently desperately trying to get 50% of support in the country in the opinion polls. It's a disintegration, a collapse, which I never expected to see in my lifetime. One party outside the big two is Britain's Liberal Party. Its spokesman on Brexit is Tom Brake. Well, I've been a Member of Parliament for 22 years, and this makes me incredibly angry. Brake says his Liberal Party has gained ground by taking a hard stand against Brexit, 
something the once dominant Labor Party did not do. Would you say this is the single biggest issue since you've been involved in politics? This is without a doubt the single biggest, most uh, divisive and most damaging issue that we have faced in the United Kingdom. What the governments are trying to do is to deliver something, Brexit, which will leave the country poorer and less influential, will damage the opportunities of young people and will make the UK a more isolated uh, place than before. So I'm doing everything I can to block it. On the other side, Marc Francois, a staunchly pro-Brexit parliament leader in the Conservative Party. If you could summarize why you and why those who voted to leave the European Union did so, what is the biggest single reason, do you think? Basically, the British people were fed up of being told how to run their country by somebody else. There are divisions within the parties. There are exoduses to other choices now. Would you say politics is in a major transition? There's definitely a change that's gone on. Because we've had three years since the referendum and we haven't yet left, the people voted to leave, the establishment have tried to stop them, and the people have become more and more angry and frustrated. The biggest argument against the breakup is fear that Britain's economy will crash when it's no longer linked seamlessly to 27 other nations. That's where the U.S. comes in. And it turns out President Trump is on the Brexit train. We're working already on a trade agreement, and I think it'll be a very substantial trade agreement. You know, we can do, with the U.K., we can do three to four times. We were actually impeded by their relationship with the European Union. When he made his recent uh, visit to the U.K., which I think was, was a success, um, you know, he basically offered, in principle, uh, an early, comprehensive free trade deal with the UK. Now, President Obama, when he tried to intervene in our referendum, uh, said, you know, get in line. Well, President Trump seems to think we should go to the front of the line, and that's all right by me. But anti-Brexit Tom Brake says he's worried Britain will get the short end of the stick in any trade deal with the U.S. Three years ago, people said this was going to be simple. It, has proved, it is proving to be anything but simple. Some Europeans have other fears beyond Great Britain, that if an exit from the European Union appears beneficial for the breakaway country, that it could prompt other nations to follow suit. Do you think maybe... If Brexit goes through, other countries might follow and break away from Europe? Yes, if it goes through and if it's not too bad for the Britons, then maybe they, yeah. In France, the right, uh, the nationalists were very strong and um, when they get stronger, they maybe they, they will also um, exit from the euro. All of that might be putting the British trolley before the horse. Order. Up next is an October 31st deadline to make the split from Europe final or cancel it. Order! I order! Brake's Liberal Party is pushing for a do-over vote to stop Brexit. What is it important, do you think, for an American audience to know about this whole mess? What's important uh, for an American audience to know is that the UK is in a, in a difficult position at the moment and that when politicians make promises that are undeliverable, there are consequences of that that the UK is now struggling to, uh, to, to cope with. In the end, in a very British way, we will muddle through and we will drink lots of tea and we will leave the European Union on the 31st of October. We will take back control of our country. We will recover our sovereignty. Whatever happens, we will remain the staunchest ally that America has around the globe. And here's a very British footnote to the story. One thing both sides of Brexit agree to is that the end deserves a party. But the pubs can't plan it because the politicians can't deliver a firm date. Sobering detail.